blessed and helping people along the journey. Yes, amen. I know I'm getting older when people will hold the door open for me. Amen. 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 Anyway, Joshua chapter 1, and you pray for us. We'll not keep you a long time, but just, I want to say again, it's been a blessing to come be here today. Even if you didn't call me, I believe I'd sneak in and just be a part of the service. Amen. amen. I like uh, the, the knives you gave us, recommended, and you children, God bless you. Thrill my heart. That's wonderful. These young folks coming up here helping, get them involved. Yes, amen. And what a blessing that is. Amen. Well, I want to read to you Joshua chapter 1. And I'll just read one verse right now. In verse number 16, if you'd like to stand, and we'll have a word of prayer and go right into the message. You may be seated after that. Joshua chapter 1, verse number 16. Joshua is one of my favorite characters in the Bible. He was a man used of God in a wonderful way. I've studied about his life and saw how God used him, and God had a job prepared for him, and he jumped right in there. But I want you to notice just one verse. Joshua chapter 1, verse 16. And they answered Joshua, saying, All that thou commandest uh, us we will do. And whithersoever thou sendest us, we will go. Our Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, this morning for just blessing us, letting us live in this great nation. Come to be part of this service this morning. Lord, our hearts have been thrilled. And we rejoice, Lord, that you've been good to us. Bless everyone, Lord, that's had a part in this service. Dear, dear pastor that loves his church. Dear wife and son that stand with him faithfully. Lord, I know that you've had your hand upon this work. And Lord, bless uh, for the few minutes that we go into the message. And may it stir some heart today. Thank you for all you've done. Thank you for what you're going to do today. In Jesus' name and will. We ask it all. Amen and amen. amen. You may be seated. Uh, a couple of years ago, a couple of years ago, my oldest granddaughter was in her senior year right up here at Ridgeland High School. And she came by the house one day. Her mother brought her by and I saw her coming towards me. You either know when your grandkids are coming towards you, they, they either want to love you or want to borrow some money. Say yeah. amen. Yeah. I didn't know what... But anyway, she walked over and said, how about can I ask you to do something for me? And I said, honey, I'll do what I can. And she said, we're having Thursday of this week. We're having a, a celebration at Ridgeland High School. And she said, the VFW is going to be there and Veterans of Fort Worth and all these different groups. And, and she said, this is my last year there at school. We're going to recognize all the veterans. And uh, I said, okay. I said, where do we go from there? She said, uh, we're going to have a service in the gymnasium. And said, there's going to be some singing. Then we're going to have a special speaker similar to what had her this morning. And said, we're going to pass out uh, a certificate to all the veterans that come. And uh, I said, uh, I, I said, what part do I have in it? You know, it's unusual me not to have part in it. And she said, you just need to be there. Because said, we're going to hand the certificate out, and when they call the certificate out, they're going to tell which student that that's their relative. And she said, I want you there. Well, you can't say no to a kid like that, can you? Amen. So I went. And she said, by the way, before she got in the car, she said, Papa, uh, don't forget, it's 9 o'clock, but it's 8.30 for you. <laughs> you that a uh, pastor know what I'm talking about. But anyway, I said, okay. And she rolled her window down and she said, oh yeah, here's a little incentive to get you to get up that early and come down there. She said, they're going to serve free Hardee's sausage and biscuits. <laughs> and she said, two of them have got your name on it. <laughs> yeah. I said, all right, I'll be there. And when, we, and when I went that morning, I went in, she was glad to see me. And I'm saying all this because uh, for a reason. And I went in and she saw me. She was so thrilled. That kid was excited. I was there, and they called the name. These dear veterans ranged in age from young people right on up. And uh, I, I remember uh, when they called my name, they asked you to stand up, and they called the name. They said, uh, William Proctor, his daughter is in, uh, Haley Phillips. And Haley waved at me when I did. She's so proud 
of the fact I was there and had a part. Well, I want to tell you something this morning. I'm mighty proud of every one of these veterans. Amen. 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 And this is this is this church's way of saying to you this morning, we're proud of the service that you've given to our nation today. Amen. And I want to just say this when when I when I looked here and I saw this verse of scripture and I had different verses. I was wondering, you've been there and you're trying to find the right verse and everything, but it just tied right into this service. And they answered Joshua. Joshua was a, a great leader. And, and God had already spoke to him about following after uh, somebody else that was a great leader. And I want to tell you what, thank God this morning for men that have took a stand for this flag. Amen. Amen. Thank God this morning for the what this flag stands for. And I rejoice in that. But these men answered and said, "Thou, whatever thou commandest, we will do. One of the things that you learn of being in the military is that you don't make your own rules. The military tells you what to do, tell you where to go, tell you what kind of way to wear your hair. I used to have a, don't holler at me right now with an amen, but I used to have thick black hair and everybody thought I used shoe polish on my hair. And when I got that haircut, that old barber looked over and, and uh, he said, do you want to keep your hair? And I said, I'd like to. He said, get your bag over there. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think it's ever come back like that. <laughs> you know, I don't think it's ever come back like it's supposed to. But I didn't feel like I was any better than anybody else. I was a 19-year-old right out of uh, high school. And I remember, I want to just share this with you. I told you before. But I remember I was preaching and God called me to preach it at 11 years of age. And I'd go here and I'd go there. Been all over Sand Mountain. I preached. God's used me. Not in a bragging way. Did I say this. I have never been to Bible college. I don't have any degrees. Only degree I got, I got one at Sand Mountain. Amen. SMU. Amen. Sand Mountain University. Did I hear it? Amen. And I want to tell you what. I sure love the Lord this morning. And I knew that I'd have to put my preaching on hold. But then God began to speak to me and show me that even being in the military, I could witness to people. I could tell people about Jesus. I could, I could be a part of that. Vietnam was going on and all the things that were happening there. And I, I remember when uh, I got uh, draft papers. And I remember they said report for duty on February the 9th, 1966. That's been a long time ago. And I remember my daddy and my four little brothers took me down to the Greyhound bus station and let me out. And daddy just looked over and patted me on the shoulder. Never got a whole lot of hugs from dad. He was just a strong individual. He'd give you a pat on the shoulder. If he gave you a pat, that means you're doing all right, you know. And I remember they looked over at me. And those little brothers were sitting in the car. And I'm thinking, why am I having to go and y'all not going, you know? That's only 11, 12 years old. But anyway, I, I remember getting on that old Greyhound bus going to Knoxville, Tennessee. And I remember that evening, I remember that evening raising my hand in that room and swearing us in to the military. And I remember that night going out, getting on an airplane at, at something like 9, 10 o'clock at night, going to Fort Benning, Georgia. And I remember those days of basic training. You remember. We all, how many of y'all remember basic training? It wasn't like camping on Lake Chickamauga, was it? <laughs> but I, I remember they hollered at us. They screamed at us. And I, I remember they want to kill us before they get us trained. And I, I remember eating things that I had questions in my mind about eating. I remember learning to shoot an M16. I remember a sergeant walking up and saying, get ready, you're going over there and face Charlie. But I want to tell you one thing that I tried to do. And I say this morning, I cannot say that I've I had the combat experience some of you, but I'm glad that I went and served my nation. Amen. I'm glad this morning that God <laughs> let me go. And God had a purpose. God had a reason. And I want to tell you this morning, our military today is the backbone of our nation. Amen. amen. And if it were not, do I hear an amen? If it were not for those that have served our nation, we'd be in sad condition right. in America. That's right. That's right. Men had to fall, shed their blood. You wouldn't be here this morning. Amen. Right. Amen. Yes. So they, so these young ladies were standing 
there at the door and they handed every veteran a little flag that they put together. And I started to wear it today, but I, had, I keep it on my desk as a reminder. And it's a little flag lapel pin of the United States of America. And here's what it says. Thank you for your service. Amen. And on the back side, oh yeah, back up a little bit. This came from Riesland. Amen. <laughs> they didn't give me this in Knoxville, Tennessee. Amen. <laughs> and then on the back of it was a little heart and it said, we love you, Riesland High School. Amen. I treasure that. That's good. Those uh, gifts that they were given to you this morning, the church is showing you that they love and appreciate you. And thank God for what you've done today. I want to say this morning that when I was sworn in <coughs> and Brother Tom, we, we wore those dress uniforms and we, we walked. We never put our hands in our pockets. You men know what I'm talking about? Amen. You marched everywhere. And when I'm walking now, I don't want to get too far away from uh, the sound here. But when you march, it's pop two, three, four, up two, three, four. Get step, Proctor. Amen. <laughs> I, I want you to know this morning, they taught me. They taught me some things. And they, they told us. Somebody said, I want to send my kid in the military. It may ruin them. No, they may come back a whole lot straighter. Amen. <laughs> y'all done with me already? Yeah. No, y'all no, wide awake, aren't you? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. But I remember those two years. I remember coming down on orders to go to Vietnam, and then later they told me, said, stay where you're at by the time. Stay there. Just we, we, and, and two weeks later, I got orders to go to Fort Richardson, Alaska. They were going to send me to a jungle, and then they decided they were going to send me to a, a polar bear area. Amen. <laughs> and then they said, hold up. No, you're not going there. I don't, I don't know. Somebody, somebody told me my home church said, uh, said my pastor used his pool to keep me from going overseas. I want to tell you something. I believe this. If God wanted me to go, he would have sent me over there. Amen. And I did my part. And I'm glad this morning that if I had to quit right now, I could say I did what I could for my nation. I served two years. And if I'd have had a thought in mind, Brother Jeff, of going to Canada, Daddy would have grabbed me by the way well, anyway, you know. <laughs> Amen. Dad served in World War II. Six major battles. My grandfather served in World War I. And right on down through there, and some of my distant relatives fought in the Civil War. My great-grandfather fought in the Civil War. Jack Stevens. And I think about, only thing I did was just have a little small part. I want you to know this morning that I rejoice in the fact that when I and I, I'm, not, I'm not saying what I've done, but gentlemen, then when, when we put that uniform on and you walk down the street or walk somewhere, you were proud because it represented yes. the yes. United States of America. Yes. Amen. Amen. I have no use. If Jane Fonda ever comes on the TV Amen. when I'm watching it, I'll shoot a hole in it. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Don't invite me to come to your house and hope she comes on. You'll be getting a new saying, yo. Amen. 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 Or an LG or whatever they are. But I want you to know this morning, thank God. I want to just say, thank God for you gentlemen. For the lady that was here. Yeah. Raise your hand up over there. She, there you go, right there. Amen. Amen. Serve your nation. Amen. Amen. Thank God. Here's another one right over here. I thank God for you. When I was pastor, I stuck my foot in my mouth, which I did that a lot of times. But I remember one time, I remember one time I said, Oh, on Veterans Day, when all the men stand up, and all of a sudden somebody tapped me on the shoulder and said, There's an Air Force veteran. That's a lady back there. Amen. I said, Excuse me. Stand up. Amen. Yes. Thank God this morning for the ladies and yes. have served their nation. Amen. Do I hear an amen? Amen. amen? Thank God this morning. And yes. I praise the Lord for that. So I rejoice. They answered the call, didn't they? Yes. When the call came in, they went. Yes. My dad was born and raised in South Carolina. And an old farm, and when he was called into World War II and got drafted, Dad, Dad answered the call in 1942, and he went, and he served. He was in Italy and all these places. They were chasing Romeo. He'd tell me all these things. But one thing my dad 
uh, looked at me one day and he, he made this statement. He said, son, I'll just tell you this. He said, I was there when the bombs were coming down. He said, I was a combat engineer. He said, I was right in the middle of it. But he said, I can tell you one thing, that in those foxholes, he said, when the bombs would start falling, and the and the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the the planes were flying over us and all that. He said, I guarantee you, there was some praying in the foxholes. Amen. There were some men that were crying out to God. I want you to know this morning, our nation was not built upon those that would turn and run the other way. But our nation was built upon men and women that answered the call, amen, and went forth and served our great nation. Amen. Yes. And I rejoice this morning that they answered the call. Joshua, Joshua needed some men to help. And I believe we still today. Hey, there are people, there, there are service men and women that are on duty right now. Right. Serving our nation while we're here. And I rejoice. How many have your Bible with you this morning? Don't let me scare you. I'm halfway through right now. But this Bible right here is the most hated book in America today. Amen. That's right. Amen. Yes. Right. Amen? Amen. Instead of tearing down statues, we need to just rejoice. We live in a nation where we have the freedom to do as, as we please. Amen. 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 Yes. Amen. I'm just disgusted. Y'all excuse me for a minute. I'm getting old. Just say what's on my mind and worry about the consequences later. But I'm just disgusted that they're wanting to do away with the police department. Right. Amen. 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 Defund the police. Yeah. Next, next time somebody's knocking on Nancy Pelosi's door, she ought to call the peace committee. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. That's right. Amen. That's right. And get Chucky Schumer in there too. Amen. 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 Thank God for the first responders. Amen. Thank God for the police. Yes. Thank Amen. God for the military. Amen. Yes. I guarantee you, military walked around and said, where's my plastic bullets at? Right, that's right. That's right. We didn't really call them bullets, called them ammunition, did we? Amen. <laughs> but hey, I'm happy in the Lord today. Amen. 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 My girls already told me, Dad, you're on your own this afternoon. I said, what do you mean? I said, if I need y'all, will you come and get me? Well, you you got GPS on your car. You can find it back home. But anyway, I rejoice today. I drive around in this great nation. See the beauty that God's blessed us with. Yes, amen, I get to go in churches, preach the gospel. Yes. Past 75 years of age. Can't hear. Can't jump as high as I used to. <laughs> COVID took away my taste of my steak, say, my <laughs> But I'm still happy in the Lord. Amen. I think COVID did part my mind. Don't holler, amen. <laughs> But I know one thing, I'm glad I'm saved today. Glad I'm on the winning side. This flag represents those that have sacrificed, dedicated their lives many, many times. I've got so much on my mind. You may have to ask me to come back here as long as I walk. But many, many times I looked at that flag this morning, the way it's folded. And I stood at National Cemetery or Lakewood Memory Guard, any of those right. cemeteries and watched the Honor Guard present that flag right. Amen. to the right. family. Yes. And say, on behalf of a grateful nation, right. the President of the United States, we give this flag to you. And I've seen that many a time. Aren't you happy for the flag today? Yes. Amen. What it represents? Yes. Amen. I've got to tell you this. When I was going to school and we got to carry the flag down the aisle in the auditorium and we would have an assembly, you never let the flag touch the ground. I didn't think I could move that fast that while ago when I reached over and grabbed that flag. Brought back members 60 years ago at Oak Grove Elementary School. Amen. But I tell you what, you didn't ever disrespect that flag. You, you never, in your wildest imagination, would you imagine somebody burning the flag? Right. Amen. Can I tell you something? Without this flag here this morning, we couldn't really have this one. Right. 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 I've pastored 42 years, and I've seen people come in before and say, let him try to bless me today. There have been better men than him. Amen. Right. 
you ought to just rejoice and you get up out of your bed this morning right. and Amen. get yourself ready and come to the Lord's house Amen. 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 without having to get an okay. That's right, brother. Right? Yes, sir. Y'all still with me? Yes, sir. I know some of y'all smell a nana pudding in the background. But hold on. <laughs> I know this ain't homecoming, is it? But anyway, I preach to so many homecomings. I don't know. I've learned one thing. A side note, you can stick a bowl of tater salad in the average bag of snows and they'll follow you through three states. So amen. <laughs> but I'm glad this morning, Brother Tom. I'm glad veterans got to let us be here. When I'm over there at National Cemetery sometime, I'll take a Trip, go down through some of those areas where I, some of the boys I grew up with, that was John Pody that was on one of the was on one of the ships that got shot in Vietnam, blew a hole in it, killed John Pody. John Isaiah was in a in a truck as a driver, hadn't been over there but about two months, and the had come blew up the truck, and at 19 years of age, maybe going on 20. John Mizell lost his life. And I take it right where his grave is, National Cemetery. I go through that grave. Somebody said, that's strange you do that. I go there to honor those men. Amen. I know if you're saved, I know you're in heaven, right? right. With the Lord. The Bible said be absent about it. And I go through there and I look at those areas. And I say, but for the grace of God, that could be me. Right. Amen. Amen. That's right. So what I want to tell you today, the answer to call. This flag represents the United States of America. Freedom is not free. There's a high cost to it. Yes, I mean, that's right. High price yes. to be paid. Yes. I got a preacher friend of mine that has had five different kinds of cancer. He's pastoring a church right now, not too far from here. And I go with him occasionally to Nashville, to the VA hospital. Part of the reason he's dealing with problems, not not speaking out of turn right now, but Agent Orange was used over there. Yeah. And he's dealing with that cancer. And I walk there with him sometime just to go along and ride with him. And I walk through that hospital and I see men that are in wheelchairs, right. some missing legs. Right. Yeah. And I see that and I think, oh, God bless those men. Many of them, many of them, they sacrificed, didn't they? Yes. To give their self. Ringo, Georgia, this weekend in Ringo, Georgia, they're putting the flags up. And you go through Ringo and you look at all those flags right. down there that have been put up. Here's a little, if I understand correctly, here's, the Gideons gave us a little New Testament to take with us that day that's for sin. The reason I love the Gideon. Still hear an amen. 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 Do they still let them go in the schoolhouse and give out testaments anymore? I doubt it, but ACLU will give me an amen and a God help us. But I've still got my little testament at home. I didn't bring it. Got a bad habit of laying things down. Take me six months to find it. But here's one here. A brother gave this to me. As far as I know, it was in, it was in the Iraqi war, the desert. This book, Camouflage, New Testament. Still the Word of God. Amen. Still represents the Bible. Amen. And I rejoice today. I love America, don't you? Right. Some said a moment ago, I don't like what it stands for. We're murdering babies in America. Amen. Right. Amen. Right. God help us. Yes. We turn back to God. Yes. But this little Bible, little New Testament, that dear brother gave it to me. And he said, I want you to have it, preacher. Yes. I think about men that, in closing, that preachers that I've known that have served in the military. Brother Ed Ballou, dear friend of mine, served in, in the Army, World War II. Brother Sam Sharp was a United States Navy veteran different men that I've come up under taught me to love this nation, taught me to rejoice in the fact. It's not just the U.S. Army, the U.S. United States Army, Marine Corps, it's us banding together 
Freedom is under attack, isn't it? Right. Yes. Amen. Yes. And I close with this thought today. If the wrong crowd had their way, they would padlock every door of every church right. house. Right. 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 Amen. Right. Stand for what's right. That's right. Amen. Support your pastor. Yes. Pray for him. Yes. Take him out by mistake every now and then. Hey. Right. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Take his wife along too. Thank you, son. Show me your love. And I, I'm glad this morning. I still get, still get cards, letters from people I used to pastor. So we just want you to know we love you and we pray for you. My best friend in the Lord, my best friend, my wife, my companion, she's already in heaven. Most of my family's already there. Three, three brothers left out of family. One of them's can barely get around. He's got a stroke. But I tell you one thing today. Been a lot of prayers coming up for me. Yes. Yes. And you? That's right. How many of you know somebody's praying for you today? Right. While I was away serving in the service, my home church had prayer for me every Wednesday night. Amen. Every Wednesday night, they gather around the altar and pray for me. Would you do something this morning? Would you put a military person or somebody? You say, I don't know about a military. Just put them in and pray for somebody serving today. They need our prayers. You know? They need our prayers. The loneliness. There's days that I'm sitting there staring at the wall in my house. I'm thinking, I didn't think it was going to come down at this point. And all of a sudden, the voice from another world comes through and says, I'll never leave you Amen. nor forsake Amen. you. And that'll get me in a heavenly way. Amen. Amen. Praise God. I was so glad to get the invitation to come this morning. I hope in some way that I touched you. I didn't want to keep you too long. But anyway, if you live in Alabama, it's just 12, uh, 12 uh, 11 or something over there. Yeah. Let's get it right. Start turning your watch back too often. I may turn it back five hours at the end of the But I've enjoyed being with you. It's been a blessing to be here. Stand for God. Pray. Whenever you hear about one of your young people signing up for the military, say, what do we do for them? Get them around the altar. Pray for them. Keep them on the prayer list. Thank you for your service. Amen. Yes. Yes. That's what I'm closing with. Thank you for your service. Amen. Thank you. Can we say that forever, Beth, this morning? Thank you for your service. Thank you for your service. And I appreciate you. God bless you. Would you stand on your feet?